All right, and now let's uh, take a look at a few additional tricks you can do in shade. So for instance, here we have a simple sphere, just a curved surface. And if we render it by default, we see it's pretty angular, right? It's not perfectly smooth. Well, quick way we can fix it is double click on the name and put a less than symbol in front of it. And you see what happens. It modifies it, it smooths it out. Let's add one more. And now you can see we have basically a perfect sphere. All right, so uh, this is one of many symbols we can use. If we take it away, it goes back. And if we put greater than, you see it turns it even more angular. All right. So there are, there's a number of those symbols. If we put a uh, tilde here, the tilde character, then we block it. We can't, uh, we can't select it. So this is locking it. It's similar to, uh, to using lock symbol in the browser. All right, so those symbols work in the same way as those uh, Boolean symbols I showed you before. And you put a, a hash here and it makes it invisible in the render. You can, uh, you can check the reference sheet that comes uh, along with shade. All those symbols are listed there uh, just as those uh, Boolean symbols. Right. Remember the, the Boolean symbols are up here, right? Our star that causes it to cut through geometry and so on. Uh, another thing what we can try now is to use some of those plugins like the sweep circle right here and uh, see what can we do with them in regards to modeling. Okay, let's create a line object, first of all, from our sphere. And it gives us a whole bunch of closed lines. And these are the lines that go, uh, well, basically that go, uh, go along this surface, that form this surface. So now let's click sweep circle. Uh, radius, we can set it to numeric or mouse drag. Let's put it mouse drag and now drag the mouse to set the width of it. And when we let it go, you can see what happens, right? It sweeps along all of those lines, effectively creating like a, mm, like a cage or a net. It's going to be pretty useful depending on what we're doing, right? And now we can delete the original file and the original mesh and we have, mm, well, whatever we have constructed. And well, you can see it's, pretty dense as far as the elements. So let's turn it into a single polygonal mesh and it will clean the browser up. And there we have it. All right, so this is one way you can use the plugin. Uh, let's take a look also now how to create um, a bunch of kit bash elements, just like these, where you can populate your shade explorer and then when you double click on it it will load it into the scene and so this is useful if you are trying to kit bash uh, things basically you just click create catalog and then using this add to catalog you add whatever is currently in your scene now as you can see i have a bunch of things here actually these are elements from uh, this motion design 2 from video copilot uh, which is sort of designed for After Effects, but it comes with uh, OBJs as well, uh, FBX, I think. So formats that Shade can import and then turn it into these uh, assets. So let me show you how to do it. So let's import here um, one of those elements. Okay, it's, it's, let's call this one. Uh, you can set the units depending on your scene and here it is right, so this is our obj uh, basically it comes with all the proper names however 
uh, it was created originally. Uh, we have to render it first, just default view, just like this, in order to create this little thumbnail in our Shade Explorer. And now we press add to catalog. So that says that it adds a duplicate of this scene mm, into our catalog, update it. You can see it calculates the updates and here we have it right in the first place. So now let's rename it. Let's go back and find it. It's over here. Uh, in this case, it has the name of this element. So let's say that we want to call it button number two. So we just rename it button number two, enter. And now when we go back to shade, uh, here at the bottom of it, you have redraw button. So just click redraw and it will sort of refresh the view. And now we have button one and button two at the bottom here. So uh, if you create additional folders, it will also put your elements in the respective folders. Okay, so this is the way to do it. Uh, another way we can use shade. Uh, let me show you how to create a trees. Right, so here we have just a simple polygon and we're going to turn it into a tree. Now, of course, you can use a full 3D assets, full 3D trees, but it's much easier, especially if you have a lot of trees to populate, to go here, for instance, to XFrog website. And they have a lot of free samples you can download. Uh, and these come uh, usually both as a 3D object, but also as just this two-dimensional uh, images of those plants. And you can see right now it looks like that, not very useful, but it has alpha channel in it. So if you have an image of a plant and it has this alpha channel, you just go here and pick transparent alpha. And so then alpha appears, you can see it on the thumbnail, it's being calculated. So during the render time, you get this. And so as you can see, uh, we have a shadow from our light that we've created. This other shadow comes from this uh, global light. So we want to sort of match them. Uh, you can also turn off the global light if you're using a different way to lead your scene. All right, so let's just modify it a little bit. All right, and there you have it. All right, so basically you have just a single polygon, but it looks pretty complex. All right, so this is really good way to do it for um, anything that is, I don't know, like in the middle ground of your scene or in a background. You can create the entire forest with just a bunch of polygons. Right? And we can duplicate it a few more times if you want to have more detail. Yeah, so now it looks a little bit like trees from this really old, I don't know, 1990s computer games where you just had, you know, plants created out of a bunch of polygons. And yeah, then if we want to make it more dense, we can select all of those, put them into a group. And now let's duplicate this group a couple times. Right, and there we have it. Right. And of course, you can you can uh, scale those. You can rotate them a little bit to make them more mm, more different. You can use different images, of course. Uh, from this X frog, each plant comes usually with uh, three or four different types. So you can assign a different one each time. Now let's take a look how we can uh, model using displacement. Just a quick example. So we have a simple uh, polygon here and now let's load our uh, black and white, well, grayscale image that we will use for displacement, right? So here we have it. And uh, 
and this is a pretty useful way uh, of modeling sometimes some details on the surface or like a very overall uh, shapes of your scene uh, first of all let's subdivide this polygon a few times so we have some sort of detail otherwise the subdivision will be really rough looking okay so maybe like this and now in here let's set the type to displacement okay and uh, what we can also do here we have our weight which mm, influences how strong this displacement is and we can also choose here the type let's set this to very fine but remember don't have the subdivision too large here and very fine here because this will take forever to uh, calculate so you have to be uh, careful and um, anything else here no, i think we're pretty good to go we can check this smoothing here it will smooth it a little bit okay and let's render it let's see how it looks okay i paused it for a second it took about half a minute and here we have it all right so you can see that uh, pretty much everything that is white goes out of it out of the surface everything that is black goes in all right well we can't see it here because it's uh, it's a displacement but you can see it here on a thumbnail right those gray areas are sort of those uh, little dense white areas stick out right and the black ones are the uh, the deepest okay so that's all for this short introduction i hope you find it useful uh, make sure to check these websites for more info and if you have any question just drop me an email thanks